Well, I'm out in front of my outback, which is covered in a tarp, and it's really cold. And it's spring, it's actually April. But Mother Nature wanted to punish us these days, so we all gotta put up with it. In any case, this is a good thing, because it means I can do an experiment. Because what I want to do is I want to compare how well my Trillium Outback heats up compared with Abner, the A-liner, when it's actually cold. Now what I've got here is I've just got a regular little clock and I've got my digital thermometer and thermostat right here. And uh, right now it says uh, minus 0 0.7, which is just under freezing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a camera here, do a time lapse. I'll turn on the furnace, see how long it takes to heat up to room temperature. And then I'll see how how low it goes if I turn the furnace off for a complete hour. So that's the comparison. And this is the Outback. Let me show you Abner. See, Abner is still in the hood. But before I can do the test, I have to even out the playing field. The Outback has been under a tarp for several weeks, and that may act as an insulator and distort the result. It's liberated! But Abner also has some extra insulation. Snow. It's a lot of snow. And in Abner, I have a similar setup. I have a different camera, but it still does time lapse. I have a bigger clock. Um, it's not the same, but they both just tell time, so who cares? And I have a digital thermostat. So that should give me reasonable results in both situations. It is just under minus three Celsius. Let's start them going. Camera's working. Just make sure it is. Put the furnace on. Now off to start the other one. In case you think I'm basing this on a single test, I actually tried it several times and failed. My first test had a beam of sunlight hit the temperature sensor, which disqualified the results. Next I had a clock that froze up in cold temperatures. Another fail. But this time I think I got it right. Two working clocks, a starting temperature pretty close, minus 3.2 Celsius on the outback, and minus 3.0 Celsius on the A-frame, sensors at the same height, and live accurate digital temperature readings. The one on the left is the outback, while the one on the right is Abner. Gentlemen, start your engines.
Okay, I may have got a little carried away by sound effects and you missed the results. In the end, it looked like a tie, right? Time for a replay. Both our racers started off pretty even, around minus three Celsius, but after the gun went off, one clearly took the lead. At the 15 minute mark, the Outback was at 13.5 Celsius, while Abner was only at 7.1 Celsius. That's a difference of 6.4 Celsius, or 12 degrees Fahrenheit, more heat. At the 30 minute mark, the Outlook made it past the finish line, achieving 20 degrees Celsius, or 68 degrees Fahrenheit, while the A-frame was only at 14.2 degrees Celsius, or 58 degrees Fahrenheit. While waiting for Abner, the Outback did have some temperature fluctuations due to the lag between the thermostat and the furnace restarting. It would be another 18 minutes of propane before Abner heated up to room temperature. The winner, the Outback, which took 30 minutes to heat up, while the A-frame took 48 minutes. Well, I have to admit, even I was surprised with those results. I expected the Outback to have a little bit of an advantage, but not that much. There's got to be a reason for it. Um, certainly one of the advantages was how much volume had to be heated up. The A-frame that I have is about 400 cubic feet of internal space, whereas the Outback has about 360 cubic feet. So it goes without saying if there's less room you have to heat up, it's going to heat up quicker. But I think there's more to it. I thought, well, I wonder if the furnaces are different. And it turns out, at least as they're rated, they're both exactly the same. They're about 12,600 BTU heating output. So it wasn't the furnaces themselves. However, I'm a little bit suspicious of the placement of those furnaces. In my outback, the furnace is right in the middle of the trailer a good central location to distribute heat. In the A-frame, however, the furnace is located under the bed, making it far more difficult to distribute heat to the rest of the trailer. I think other A-frames have a lot better location than mine. Well, now that I have old Abner up to temperature, I think I'm just gonna sort of hang out in it for a while. I haven't seen it, kind of missed it, it's just been sitting by itself the last little while. Some people ask me, before I cough on my orange, <coughs> oh, talk and eat, can't do them both. Sorry, some people ask me, is there anything you're gonna miss about your old trailer? And I think there are. I mean, one of the big features I really liked was being able to see out my rear view mirror while I'm driving because it was low enough I could see over the trailer and see what other cars or motorcycles or whatever are behind me. That I'm gonna miss. And then I was actually looking at new A-frames, you know, the ones 2019, 2020. And it's unfortunate, but they don't seem to care about that anymore. They want to jack up the wheels higher. They want to put dormers and big domes and all that. So the advantage that I had with the older A-frame isn't there anymore. Because if, if they increase it even like five or six inches, I can't see out the back of my window anyway. So um, I guess that's just going the way of the dodo bird, unless you get an earlier one like I've got. But other things, um, well, I did like this. Of course, it didn't come with the the uh, A-frame. I put it in, but this is my curtain rod that I just put up on the top there. I know it's out of the way; you can't see it, but uh, I like that feature because you could hang your clothes, towels to dry, and all that in that wasted space up there anyway, and you can just slide them back and forth because it's like a curtain rod, um, so you can get things out of the way. Other than that, um, I guess I'm gonna miss my old uh, table or desk, whatever you wanna call it. It's still here. Um, 
I mean, I do have a new table, of course. Not one with a map. Kind of like the map, but eh, maybe I'll find a new map. I sure got a lot of use from my custom-made desk and road map. Many of my cross-country travels were planned from it. Now, from this point of view, the front of the trailer, is there anything I'm going to miss? Well, I did like this ledge, even though it didn't come with the A-frame, I put it in, because you can have handy things like this back scratcher right there. Uh, you also have like tissues or whatever you might need along this. I've got it on both sides. Other than that, not much. Um, I'm certainly not going to miss these drafts I can feel coming in right now. I'm not going to miss that door. I've had so many problems with that door. It's the weak point of the structure. And so while you're traveling and everything's bending and twisting, it always gets out of whack and then I have to readjust it. It was also a big uh, uh, leak point. If it was raining, it would leak down the sides and underneath and all that. So I'm not going to miss the door. Um, one thing I'm not going to miss, and this really annoyed me, is you see my wonderful sleeping bag. I've always really liked this perfect sleeping bag, but look at the water stains on it. What's that from? It's when there's ice and snow on the roof and you've got to take everything down to travel. Well, because the roof's so high, you can only get to so much. There's always some left over. So when the roof comes down and it gets warmer later in the day, it all melts inside the trailer and goes into my sleeping bag. I'm not gonna miss that. As a matter of fact, the whole taking it down and putting it up thing, nah, I'm not gonna miss that either. I'm not gonna miss the noise. As you can hear, there's not much between inside, and that was some ice. <laughs> Lots of noises in here. I'm not gonna miss those. One thing I haven't found out yet, but I'm really curious, is how much can I store in the Outback versus what could I store in the A-frame? Because I did a lot of optimizing on this one, especially like under here where I removed the water tank and uh, the, the shoreline uh, cord that was underneath here, that gave me some space. Plus removing the sink and all that stuff. In the A-frame, it appears there's more space below where it folds, and, and, and there is. But the advantage of the Outback is it has permanent space above. And it'll be, it'll be interesting to see. Can I take everything that I have in the A-frame and put it in my Outback? Or will there be compromise? I guess that's going to happen in another video. Well, I'm back in the Outback. It's nice and toasty in here. But it's time for the second part of the experiment. Now that both trailers are up to room temperature, what happens when I turn off the furnace and let them cool for one hour? This race was a lot closer, with the A-frame a couple of lengths in the lead. Although the Outback did seem to lose heat faster, I think they both did quite poorly at insulating themselves from the frigid temperatures outside. The final result showed that without any internal heat for a full hour, the Outback lost 13.7 degrees Celsius, or 24.5 degrees Fahrenheit, of its heat. The A-frame lost 10.2 degrees Celsius, or 18.5 degrees Fahrenheit, of its heat. Abner was a little warmer, but it still made it quite cold inside those campers. Well, as far as the cool down goes, you know, it does seem like the A-frame had a little bit of an advantage, but, you know, it wasn't a lot. And so I wouldn't really rely on it, this information too much. Um, there's so many things, like, for example, the sun was coming up when the cool down. Um, one trailer could have been more in the sun and one could have been more in the shade. So there's just so many factors. But there is one advantage that my A-frame had that the Outback did not have. 
The last time I used Abner was in the middle of winter time and I had winterized it. So when I did this heating test, I totally forgot one thing. And that is, with Abner, I put plastic over all the windows. So they had that little bit more of insulation. Could that account why it retained more heat? I don't know. But you know what? I'm tired of wasting propane. It's good enough for now. So there you go. There's my results, but do take them with a grain of salt because circumstances would change. Nobody has the exact same trailers I have. And uh, so if you're shopping around for, for trailers, you're, you're sort of on the fence, don't use this as a guideline, but do ask the questions from your salesman when you're, when you're looking to buy a trailer. How well do they heat? Um, you know, how well do they retain heat? Those are good questions to ask, not just whatever it says in their catalog. Um, but let's face it here. Not everybody camps all year round in all temperatures and all seasons like I do. As a matter of fact, if you only camp in the summer when it's nice and warm, then these results probably don't mean anything to you at all. I just wanted to pass them on. I needed a benchmark for my Outback because I need to know how I can improve. And I think I can improve the insulation a little bit, but I needed to start somewhere. And this is the place I'm going to start. Making sure your camping experience is the best starts off with what you camp in. And everyone is happier when they're warm and comfortable. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and please check out my other ones as well. I hope you found my comparison useful, and if you'd like to see more, please subscribe.